Welcome to Enter the Glory Zone with me, Dr. Edith Davis, on 94.1 FM, Wave 94. Spiritual believers and listeners, I want to get straight to the word that God has given me for the body of Christ and for the world. Daddy God, you hey, vai, hey is a good God. Daddy God, you hey, vai, hey is a just God. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. And He loves His children. He loves Republicans and He loves Democrats. He loves independents. He loves all people so much that He gave His only begotten Son, Christ Jesus, for the forgiveness of all every sin, their past sins, their present sins, and even their future sins have been covered by the blood of Jesus. And it is a free gift. All you have to do is receive it. Now, one of the issues that God is bringing to mind is unity. Unity in the body of Christ. Unity in the body of Christ. And if we are unified, if we are unified under Christ Jesus, there's a commanded blessing. And unity does not necessarily mean being in lockstep, total agreement with everyone. But it does mean honoring and respecting people, respecting one another. It is very clear, Jesus makes it very clear that we are not identified as his disciples by whether or not we call ourselves Christians. Yes, we are not. We are identified as being his disciple by loving one another, by agape loving one another, which is a sacrificial love, which is where you love someone, where you will do whatever is best for them. Daddy God, you hey, vai, hey, loves us and he wants the best for us and he wants us to love one another, respect one another, be in unity with one another. Daddy God, you hey, vai, hey, he is not a Democrat. And he is not a Republican. Daddy God, you are is God. The one and only true God of this entire universe, of this planet, of us. Regardless of you accepting him as God or not. He is absolute. He is truth. He is love. He is grace. He is mercy. And he is justice. And one of the things that we need to recognize and understand about our God, Daddy God, Yuhei Lord God, Yahshua Mashiach, Christ Jesus, and Lord God, Ruha HaKadosh, Lord God, Holy Spirit, is He looks at the heart. He cannot be deceived. He can, you can say whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. And God gives us free will and free choice. But God can penetrate our hearts and he can know the motives. God is interested not only in that we do good, but that our motives are pure, that our motives are in love. I look at the great divide in our nation and I pray for the unity of the body of Christ. I pray that Daddy God, Yuhei Vahe, will touch the people of the United States of America, will touch the people of the world through his bride, Christ Jesus. And we will not be able to touch people if we do not walk in the Spirit, and we cannot Walk in the spirit if we do not crucify our flesh. I just recently was asked to speak 
at a prayer rally this past Sunday, and I was led by the Holy Spirit to specifically talk about unity in the body of Christ, being a true disciple of Christ Jesus, which means to love one another, agape, love one another, and to crucify our flesh and walk in the Spirit. I felt that God wanted me to remind the church that it is we are the world's only hope. If we do not humble ourselves, if we do not turn from our wicked ways, the land will not be healed. We are the solution that God has sent to heal this land. We may be the only opportunity for some people on this planet to see Christ Jesus like Mother Teresa. The power of Mother Teresa was that she had a divine encounter while she was holding a dying Indian man. She held him in her arms as though he was a little baby until he took his last breath. And then she realized she had a vision that she was holding Christ Jesus. Because God says clearly in his word that if you do for the least, the least of these, you do it unto me. Christ Jesus, he went out to the marginalized. Christ Jesus dealt with the poor. He loved them. He dealt with the sick and the dying. He loved them. Jesus Christ went out to the marginalized. He didn't hang out with the rich and the powerful. He hung out with the destitute and the desperate. He loves us. And Jesus was not a racist. He was anti-racism, and he dealt with it with the leadership of the Jewish um, synagogues, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Herodians. The elite, the 1% was the Pharisees, and then came along the Sadducees, which were like the scribes, and then the Herodians. Jesus is looking for his bride. He's looking for the church to demonstrate and show the world true love and true unity. And we don't have to be in lockstep with one another to be unified. We don't have to think exactly the same way. We don't have to same, have the same perspective. As a matter of fact, each one of us has a different facet, a different understanding of the, the multifaceted Knowledge of God. God is so massive, so incomprehensible that it will take a multitude of us together just to have a, a glimpse of the perfection and the, and the awesomeness of the one and only true God. We need to demonstrate the love of God and the unity of Christ. Jesus, Jesus the Christ clearly states in his word, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. And Jesus demonstrated this phenomenal love even on the cross itself. As he died the most excruciating death. Beat to a pulp where you, he wasn't even recognizable as a man. Face beaten and body just torn to shreds. No skin on his back. Bones popping out of his side. You can see his bones. He looked up to the father and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It was the most unbelievable power move in the history of mankind. Because if Christ Jesus had not forgiven us, he would have not been able to be used to save us. It was imperative that 
in this excruciating moment in his flesh that he loved us. And he cried out to the Father and said, Father, forgive them. He was freed then to die for our sins. It was just a magnificent power move of God, of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. We, as the body of Christ, need to have our allegiance totally to the Father. Daddy God, you hey, bye, hey, to our Lord Christ Jesus, Yahshua Amashiach, and to our Lord God, Holy Spirit, Ru Ha Kadash. We are, should not be having allegiance to the, any party except the kingdom of God. Yes, we are to be good citizens. Yes, we are to bring, I guess you would say, the Christ, the God world perspective and not the world perspective to wherever, wherever we go. We, we bring God's perspective, the, the mind of Christ, the, the word of God to our jobs, to our marriages, to our children, raising our children, to every aspect of our lives. We are to represent the kingdom of God. We are not of this world. We are not of this world. We are of the kingdom of God. We are a new creation in Christ Jesus. We are not a Democrat. We are not a Republican. We are under the Lamb of God. We are under the Lion of the tribe of Judah. It does, whoever becomes president, whoever wins the White House. It never replaces the fact that Daddy God Yuevae, Lord God Yahshua Mashiach, and the Lord God Holy Spirit, they still sit on the throne, that they are God, and that every knee, every knee will bow to our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, that Soon, Jesus the Christ will be coming back and we will not have a democracy. We will have a theocracy. We will be under the allegiance of King Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We will have a thousand year reign on planet Earth under King Jesus, the False prophet will be thrown into the lake of fire. The Antichrist will be thrown into the lake of fire. And Satan, the, the ex-archangel Lucifer, will be chained up for a thousand years and then released for one more time to test the people's allegiance to the one and only true God. Daddy God, you have Lord God, Yahshua, Mashiach, and Lord God, Holy Spirit. Pretty simple. And after that testing, planet Earth will go through a purging. We will have a new Jerusalem come down from heaven and be put on the planet. We will have a new planet Earth. It will not have an ocean. It will have a river. That run a crystal river running from the throne of God. We will have everything made brand new in and through Christ Jesus. And everyone, and I mean everyone on planet earth will live forever. And God will look at the hearts of men and women and look at their choices. There are consequences when leadership does not operate in the precepts and the laws of the word of God. That it is a heavy responsibility to be a leader. The blood of people will be on leadership's hands when they do not lead the people to righteousness, to justice, and to love.
Daddy God Yuhei Vai is not up for people faking it and shaking it. God is not up for people pretending and saying one thing, but in their hearts having something else. God wants people to truly love their neighbors as they love themselves. And you need to love yourself properly. And he wants you to love one another, period. End of discussion. There is no room for hatred. There's no room for fear. There's no room for hatred. There's no room for racism. There's no room for sexism. There is no room for any ism other than the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. And in Christ Jesus, there is no white. There is no black. There is no Gentile. There is no Jew. There is no male. There is no female. Now, while we're on planet Earth, in the physical form, there is male and female. God created us as male and female. But in the spirit realm, There is no male and female. There is none. We are all under, under Christ Jesus, who is our loving Savior, who died for each and every one of us. But he also lived for each and every one of us. He showed us the way. He showed us how to love our enemies. We were enemies of God when he when he sent his only begotten son. To die for us. We are to love our enemies also. And that is the only way that you can destroy hatred, that you can destroy racism, that you can destroy all the isms. One of the interesting things that God has shown me is about how a lot of sins, abortion, racism, all of this are sins are connected. The goal of abortion was to wipe out a particular race of people. Did you know that? The goal of abortion was to wipe out African Americans. When the abortion clinics were set up, they were set up in the poor black communities. Over 40% of abortions are African-American babies and Hispanics babies as well. What's shocking about this number is that African-Americans make up less than 12% of the population, but 40% of the babies that are aborted are African-American. This is genocide. This is racism on the ultimate scale. Yet, God still gives you choice. He will not violate your choice. Even if it means you're choosing to separate yourself from him and go to hell, Jesus, the Father and the Holy Spirit, will not violate your will. And even when he gives you choice, he begs you. He cries out to mankind saying, you have a choice. Choose life. Choose life. As we come together Towards the end of this season of darkness, where we prepare for the coming of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus for the second coming. We need to be about our father's business. We need to be like the five wise virgins. We need to have enough oil in our oil lamps to sustain us. Until our Lord gets here. And the way you fill your oil lamp is by reading the word, meditating on the word, and doing the word. And be in a repentive state. Our new pastor, Pastor Isaiah Williams, and our one of our um, leaders, Amy Johnson, they have been talking about repentance. 
Everybody's been crying out repentance and I finally realized that I need to repent every day. I even struggled just recently after I got the opportunity to to be used by God. I was tested in my own church the next Monday night at 7 p.m. I had to crucify my flesh and I chose to, to crucify my flesh. It is not about me. It is not about Dr. Edith Gale Williams Davis. It is about Christ Jesus. This is not, you cannot be self-centered. You have to be Christ-centered. You have to have compassion. Compassion for everyone, even your enemies. The church has an awesome opportunity to demonstrate the love of God in this tumultuous time, in this time of great division, in this time where people, you can't even buy ammunition or a gun because people have been getting guns and getting ammunition. In some cases, some people have been getting it in self-defense, but in some cases, people have been buying these guns and this ammunition for a race war, a civil race war in our country. And God, God's not going to have it. It's not going to happen. A young man just a few years ago, a young Caucasian male, Walked into a church, a church where the people fed him and loved on him. And he still pulled out a gun and killed many of them. Shot the pastor, I think, 12 times. One was the people, she was like 90 something years old. Killing. That was nothing but Satan who had taking over the body of that young man. And the whole objective was to cause a race war. But guess what? The Holy Spirit entered into the bodies of the grieving families. They crucified their flesh. They denied themselves revenge. And each and every one of them went stood before that young man forgave him as God, like Christ Jesus. Father, forgive him for he knows not what he has done. It was Christ. It was the Christ in them that cried out and forgave him and loved him. And it was supernatural love of Christ Jesus. The supernatural love of Christ Jesus enveloped them, took over, took over. And guess what happened? A race war was averted. The flag, the offensive Confederate flag was removed. And not only that, they dug up the pole and got and threw it away. And the leadership, the woman, the the leader of that state, I believe she became, I was appointed as ambassador to the United Nations because of her leadership in this tumultuous hard time. God is looking for his church to represent him, to love, to pray, to Ask for wisdom, insight, and understanding and knowledge. The spirit of the Lord and the quick understanding of the fear of the Lord. He wants us to repent of our sinful ways. He wants us to humble ourselves. Repent. And he will heal our land. There is hope for America. There is hope For the world. As long as there's one Christian. That's only. If there's only just one Christian. Left on planet earth. One. Just one. There's hope for the world. 
there's hope for the United States of America because Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus can invade this planet, invade this world through that one Christian that's willing to humble themselves, that's willing to repent from their sinful ways so that God can use them. My Godfather, Doug Apple, the station manager at 94.1 FM, has this rhema word about advance forgiveness, forgiving everyone and everyone in advance. It took me a while to grasp it. But finally, I'm, I, I try to walk in it, not like him. I'm not there yet. But I get up in the morning and I forgive everyone in advance. And the reason why my godfather said that it is so important that we do this so that we are freed up, we free up the Holy Spirit to love these people who have hurt us, who have betrayed us, who have despitefully misused us. It frees us up to have the love of the Holy Spirit, the love of the Father, and the love of Christ Jesus to radiate out of us and to heal them and to transform them and to introduce them to their Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. This is an opportunity where the body of Christ can come together and love one another in a time where hate is trying to destroy our nation. And people will say, well, you have to fight fire with fire. But I say no to the devil, no, no. You fight fire with water. You fight hate with the love of Christ Jesus. And there's nothing, nothing, nothing that can withstand the love of the Father, the love of Christ Jesus, and the love of the Lord God, Holy Spirit. Christ Jesus demonstrated it on the cross that day in Calvary at Golgotha on Good Friday. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he, he had forgiven them in advance. He was able to go to the pit of hell and deposit every sickness, every disease, every lack, every poverty, every hateful curse on this earth. He deposited in hell and came back, made brand new, new body, which we are also going to receive a new body. Christ Jesus did that because he walked in forgiveness and we must do the same. We must do what those people did when their loved ones were killed and they forgave that young man and they God was able to have the agape, his agape love to radiate through him to that young man. Yes, there are going to be consequences for that. Yes, but we live forever, each and every one of us. Whoever sits in the White House, we as members of the body of Christ are to pray for them and their family. We're to pray for our leadership, regardless of if we voted for them or not. It is a command. We belong to King Jesus. We belong to Daddy God, Yuhei We belong to the Lord God, Holy Spirit. And the bottom line for God is this. We are to love one another. We are to love our neighbors and we are to love our enemies. We are to walk in the agape, the sacrificial love of Christ Jesus. And we are to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do so that the Holy Spirit can use us to save the world. We're not saving the world. Christ Jesus has already saved the world, but he can use us to be his ambassadors, be his representatives. Whoever gets an office, we're to lift them up and pray for them. 
We're to cover them with the blood of Jesus. We're to cover our nation with the blood of Jesus. And we're to love one another. I want to end this broadcast with Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your heart that Jesus is Lord, that he died and he was buried and he rose again, and you profess this with your mouth, you are saved. Thank you for once again joining me, Dr. Edith Davis, on Into the Glory Zone on 94.1 FM Wave 94. Presence.